Hi, I'm Hal Thompson. Welcome to the hot seat. Today, my very special guest is Samantha B. Thanks for Hi. being on. Thanks for having me. Now that it's autumn, have yes. you noticed an increase in people waving their arms around at you and shouting, hey, get away from my food? Uh, no, exactly. I think I know what you're, I feel like I know what you're. What kind of a bee is a Samantha bee? It's like a, it's just like a, like a, like a fun one. An you adventurous, exciting bee? An adventurous, exciting bee that you don't mind having around that isn't as much of a nuisance, maybe? I don't try to generally pollinate on your stuff. I mean, I was just kind of kidding, joshing you. I know you're not okay. a bee. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's but a um, what I don't understand is the title of your tour, My Favorite yeah. Woman. Yeah. Well, uh, your favorite. Your favorite your, woman. My, oh. Yours. My, it's your. It, yeah, my, my favorite woman. But it's called your. It's just like Ashley. But you're. I, I, I thought because about. I think you're. All, I think you're my second favorite woman. Hmm, that's nice. Who's your first? My associate, Lady Tink. She's a Victorian oh. lady. That's. I think that's good. I think that she should be your your actual favorite woman. Oh, I, I appreciate that. We could just put a parenthesis. You know, parentheses like your second favorite woman. Like I probably shouldn't be anyone's favorite woman except for the people in my life outside this door but you're their favorite woman maybe you should call it their favorite women their favorite the and tour. then a picture and then a picture of my family and then a long explanation of who they are yeah 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 exactly for the subtitle because right yeah, now for the subtitle you've got the joy of sex education mm -hmm. yeah. that sounds like a lot of fun can you talk a little bit about what what you talk a little bit about <laughs> Well, I have some theories about how we don't really understand our bodies. And I'm kind of into myth busting about our bodies, especially me, because I'm older. It's like women enter my age of life and know absolutely nothing. And we're just like, oh, I'm falling apart. Why? I didn't, no one told me this would happen. And then it does. And then you're like, I could have been warned. You're teaching ladies about their bodies. I am. I, I could have used that. Mostly when yeah. I was in high school, all I learned about my body was the places that it hurt the least to take a punch. <laughs> uh, and Where does also, it hurt the least? Wait, it hurts everywhere. Is there a soft There's spot a couple it's... areas. You can, you can absorb a punch pretty good in your shoulder. My left butt cheek was particularly absorbent. Okay. Okay. That's absorb. It's absor a shock absorber. Yeah, it was pretty shock absorbing. I also learned in high school that I was bad at volleyball. Yeah, do you volleyball. talk about that at all in your in your show? Yeah, I do a whole. I do like about twenty minutes about how hard volleyball was for you. But, it's oh, gonna be me? a real. Yep, this is gonna be a, quite a show for you. You're gonna <laughs> be like, what? How did she know? I just assumed. I can't wait. Oh, that's gonna help me learn. Really Maybe good. I'll become better at volleyball by the end of your show. We have a whole section and you come up on stage and we like volley the ball. I don't know how volleyball works. You kind of pump, pump it with your hand up in the air. I think you try to smack it into the face of your enemy. It's Destroy vicious. your enemies. There's a velocity to it that is terrifying. You might as well call it Velociball. Whoever names sports. I think his name is, is Jim. He's 98. Oh my God. He's done some great work and some poor work mixed results um i was thinking about the american healthcare system it doesn't yeah. really yeah it was sometimes i just do that i don't know if you do i do that <laughs> i don't think the women's health issues are really taken care of with the american healthcare system yeah. do you think that maybe that's why more and more women are turning to witchcraft and magic to get help <laughs> we might as well we may as well turn to witchcraft and the system's not going to help you. The system's not going to help you at all. But magic spells will. Maybe. You know what? It's not going to hurt to take some seeds out and bathe them in the light of a full moon. 
Yeah, maybe get some special rocks that emanate, you know, energies. We love a scented oil. I don't deny anyone's exploration of scented oils. If you could cast any one spell, what would be the spell you would cast? What would be the spell I would cast? I feel like it should not be something selfish. Granting myself the power of flight. It should be like the spell of caring for people who need care. The care spell? Just like a care spell. You just, just like a blanket. Flick your wrist and with. blanket mm-hmm. everyone mm-hmm. with a with a with a spell of healing. It and almost my, be a spell of healing. I like a spell of healing, but then also just like a maybe if I could just like tuck in the power of flight for myself. Just whoever's granting just on the back me, end. just for my generosity in the original spell that I cast, could you like throw in? wings you could maybe just call the call the spell the, a spell of care and flight in order to cast this spell i got to be able to fly who makes right. this who grants the spells it's not i think it's Jim. the yeah i think it's jim i think it's the same guy it's the same guy he also does spells jim's a god he's he's an old wizard jesus i'm scared of him <laughs> if i could cast a spell it's a little mm-hmm. selfish but i would just cast a, i would have a spell that i create pudding i just really like pudding it has a good squish. What's what? Which what's your puddings? This is general. Like what type of like a special? Any pudding? All pudding? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. You gotta really think it through because this could be like you know. There's an old children's story, the story of Strega Nona, who just like kept creating spaghetti, and you could be like, I wish for the power of pudding, and then it's just like butterscotch pudding out of every. Every orifice. orifice all day and long. All day long. And you're like, fuck it, this pudding is a monkey's paw wish. I regret this. That would be yeah. I, I, I got I better be more careful. I want very specific chocolate pudding that is created in a bowl and comes out of my finger. <laughs> like an unlimited squirt gun. Yeah. Chocolate pudding that goes into a specific bowl yeah yeah exactly just for you for always like in a bowl finger pudding squirts never a mess finger gun pudding squirts clean but clean like hygienic <laughs> exactly i don't want a mess um <laughs> you were on the time 100 most influential people list of 2017 i bet they regret that what I'm do you sure think they're like i don't know they probably rescind it <laughs> i don't know can they do that Maybe. That would be outrageous. Maybe not. Someone else I interviewed, John Green, he was also on that list back in 2014. Nice. Was Did he take it? Was he like, this is serious. I'm going to live up to this. I don't think so. He seemed to laugh a lot when I asked him about it. (laughs) I asked him where he was on the the chart now. Oh, shit. He said number 17,000. How did you get on that list? Probably my PR team. They're pretty good. They're really good. I was I had some shoved, shoved some people elbow like sharp elbows, just shoving people out of the way. Um, I'm still working on trying to crack the top seven hundred and sixty five thousand four hundred thirty eight most influential. I feel like you could do it. I'm hoping I like, so. I feel like you could get there. I thought maybe you could have me on your podcast. Yeah, because you have famous people on that podcast, you right? Do. Yep. And they just get famouser and famouser after yeah, they, they get come on my podcast. Famouser. Yeah, they get famouser and they get on lists. Um, I had a question about your podcast. It's called Choice Words. Yeah. What are some of the more interesting big choices that your guests have made? You know, Karamo? Yes. Queer Eye? He found out that he was a father and that the mother of his child had never told him that she had a baby completely folded that child into his life and became a dad and like was like i accept you now i have a full family that's a big that was a big one i was like i love this oh my god i love stuff like that well i don't know what i would do if i found out i had a secret child what what would you do um i would i think i would how would wait like i made a child and forgot about them yeah <laughs> <laughs> hold on <laughs> that would be stunning 
And I would look back on the time that I spent in between the time I had a child and forgot that I did have the child. And then I would investigate that time period where I obviously spent years in a fugue state. And then I would go, let's get into it. And then they would say, how did I, how did I get out of you without you noticing? <laughs> I know. They'd be like, you must have been really spaced out when this was happening. And I would be like, it You're was months. Very years. distracted for nine months. If I found out a secret child, I would welcome yeah. them. I would welcome them in as well. I would have them come home with me. They could help me mm -hmm. take care of the goat. Do you have a goat? I have over 300 goats. <laughs> What? I started with one. That was a big choice. And then that's a choice. I just couldn't I just couldn't stop. You just have a yard. You just step outside the room where you have your celestial map and it's just all goats on the other side of your well, tapestry. Yeah, they're mostly up in the attic. They're just eating through the rafters. Yeah, they they're not good for the structural support of the house. They're kind of like yeah. termites, but they louder. Are. My Mom used to have goats and she, and they would eat your clothes. That sounds about right. Yep. Um, I had another question. I used to enjoy watching you on that show that happened every day. Oh, thank you. It's hosted by uh, Rod Stewart. You guys were pretty good. How does Rod get his hair like that? He, it's just a lot of wax, a lot of fussing, a lot of frosting tips. Um, do you enjoy spending time on social media? No, I don't. Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's rough. I don't. It's like don't putting know. yourself into a, a dryer. It is with the little, with those little wool balls that just like punch you. And they scrape you and you're spinning scrape around you. and you're dizzy. You're hot, you're dizzy. Something's punching you from all quarters. Like there's like 82 wool balls in there. Yeah. Just pummeling you. Just like trying oranges. to. Oranges. Like oranges. Oranges? What do you mean? Yeah. Like hard oranges. Yeah. And then you, you're trying you're trying to stay conscious, but you can't. And yeah. you're like, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of social media? And you can't. You can't get out. You can't. You can't the quarters out. never run out. No. It's an eternal spin cycle. It's an eternal air dry. I wonder, what's the least constructive criticism that you've ever received? online stop talking with your hands you need to stop using your hands so much it's so distracted which is like not helpful because what what and someone said that they wished that i would get hit by a bus and i felt that that was going too far that seems a little extreme not constructive i could have at least tweaked it a little bit and said i hope that you miss your bus it just was like, I feel that you should walk out your door and just drop dead. <laughs> Sometimes people have a really bad day and then they get online and they're like, oh, look, a, a party. I can just say whatever I want. And then all my regret, right. all my anger at my life goes away. You can't really like invest all your self-worth in what people say about you online or you are in so much trouble you have to add a couple yourself. inches to your skin you just probably should not read it i have a few friends on facebook and they had some questions i love that i love facebook friends niobe barbosa says what makes you find the funny in today's tragic world how do you find funny i don't think i always do but i try to because i feel like if you don't if you're not kind of at least seeing absurdity in it it's hard to survive it i can't process stuff until i'm like laughing about it on some level or just looking at the the strangeness of it exactly yeah the absurdity of life yes you yes. used to do sketch comedy in I canada i did yes i was in a sketch troupe called the atomic fireballs which is a very spicy candy i don't know if you've ever tried one our, I think our sketch comedy was a lot like an actual atomic fireball. Was it? How was spicy it spicy? And delicious. It was an all female sketch troupe before that was even cool. Oh, back when it was uncool. Back when it was uncool. <laughs> no one, 
<laughs> wanted to have us on. <laughs> it is very, it is cool now, though. It's it's true. Is it cool now? Oh, <laughs> I, I hope so. Sure. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, Whitney Derendinger says, how sassy is too sassy? Hmm. How sassy is too sassy? Should there be a limit on sassiness? Can there be? I think there can be a limit on sassiness. If it's inauthentic to you, if you're just being sassy. For sassy's sass. sake. For sassy's sake. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you'll be too sassy. And then you walk away from the transaction going, that was too much sass. Reel it in. Reel, Reel it in. in the sass. I, but if you're all systems go sass, you have to be that. It is has to just be true to you. That's who you are. You're yep. a sh shining, a bright shining sun of sass. If you're a goddamn sass machine, just be that. In Canada, when I was growing up, we had a rock performer and her name was Sass Jordan. So if you're a Sass Jordan, just be that shining star. That's a really cool name. I wonder if I should change my name to Sass Thompson. Oh my God. I, I really like that. It's really good. <laughs> Sass Thompson. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Sass Thompson. Welcome to the, Sass. the hot Sass. Mm -hmm. The Sass seat. I'm not the sure Sass what it sounds. Seat. Sass seat. You could have a little segment in your hot seat that was like. A red wave passes over the screen. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for hot Sass. And, but it's like dripping. It's like hot sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, oh, I haven't really thought it through. What okay. do you recommend I do to escape the soul crushing existential creeps <laughs> that when every night when I'm trying to fall asleep? Maybe this would be the sass moment. I cut I off part that. of the question, but there's oh, something about okay. the soul crushing existentialness, mm -hmm. the soul crushing existential dread that creeps into the bedroom when one is attempting to fall asleep. You know what? I do have an answer for this, and it's yeah. so lame that I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. You gotta get a hot. You gotta get a heating pad. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get a heating pad, and you gotta crank it up, because I dare you to stay awake with existential dread when there's a cozy ten dollar Walgreens heating pad warming up your lower back. You'll be able to. You'll be like, okay, I just the state of the world. Mm. The state of the world is so bad and we're cruising toward like debt default and that heating pad is going to do its work and you're going to be asleep within 45 seconds, despite your best efforts to stay awake and work out the world's problems. You'll have so much more energy in the morning to fight the good fight. I swear to God, I go to bed with my heating pad and I think you're my best friend. Heating pads. That's a hot sass from Samantha B. It's my hot sass. Red wave across the screen. Hot sass. <laughs> Can you imagine if I thought that having a heating pad was hot? That would be sad. Hot it's sad. That's <laughs> sad. That's sad sauce. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Um, I just had one more question. Mm -hmm. Baby Cookie asks, can you help? Yeah, I can. She can, Baby Cookie. That's baby good. Baby Cookie, I love your name. Baby, baby a Cookie baby. is a baby. Oh, my God. I'll help. I'll help that baby. Can you use your care spell? My care spell. That has a secret special extra just for me. Just flying. Mm-hmm. I'd like to thank Samantha B for being on the hot seat tonight. She's on tour right now, playing at the Barrymore Theater Thursday right here in Madison, Wisconsin. You can get all the info from her site, samb.com. I thought it was interesting that you chose the Sam part of Samantha for your website. Thank you. I think you can get it to it many ways, including my full name. Samantha B. Yeah. I like it's, Sam B. It works in all ways. You can call me Sam B. I like it. Did you consider calling it the B or manbee.com? Like Mantha B? No, I did not do that. No. That's good. I I'm glad know. that you didn't. didn't at all. I had one final question from mm -hmm. Jess Shooknecht. Yeah. What is the worst way to end an interview? 
Perfect. That was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh, I'm excited so about that. <laughs> <laughs>